Hi, welcome to Convince Me Audio. Courtesy of my friend Skedra over at Viking Weave, we have the privilege of reviewing this. The Abyss Diana V2. Press the like button, push the subscribe if you're not subscribed, and let's talk. In 2017, Abyss introduced the Diana, and they decided to diversify the Diana line um, and introduce the Diana V2 in 2019. Now, the Dianas have gone through a few variations uh, with the OG in 2017, like I stated, obviously. And then in 2019 with the introduction of this one, the V2. But then there is the Diana Phi, which actually sits above this V2 in the lineup. Now, the Diana V2 sits firmly at $3,000 and the Diana Phi sits at $4,000, and the Abyss 1266TC sits at $5,000. So this is the baby of the family. In the box, it's a very boutique style box. It's very understated. It's very, very elegant. But you do realize, like the Mad 24s review up here, that it's not the box that really matters. I mean, it's magnetically clasped like this, but it doesn't take up any room. It's very elegant, very Apple-esque. So we can set this aside here. We don't need those two. Now, this canvas constructed bag with leather has got etching here. Absolutely beautiful design. It looks really intriguing. I've got a shower bag that looks like this. It's, it's I've never seen anything like it for headphones. It's kind of odd. Um, you've got this beautiful medallion here and a double zipper that opens up like this. This is quite an odd design. I mean, 10 out of 10 for thinking outside the box, but for execution, uh, we will see. This is the JPS Labs cable that comes with it. It's rather soft, but it's a really weird feeling material. It feels a bit like a network cable, but much, much, much softer. I've not seen anything like it. The actual four pin XLR on this is very sturdy, very nicely built, it looks good. Um, and then at the other end, we have a 2.5 connection type, but you've got to be really careful with this uh, because this 2.5 connection type here is so narrow and thin that custom cables for this headphone will have to be tailored individually for these specific headphones. I doubt very much um, you being able to use your own 2.5 connection cable with this headphone. There is this protection film that is covering the headphones and then we have the headphones nestling inside. This is really beautiful and a really elegant design. I just don't think it's really practical because these zips, both on either side, are too close to this ultra soft leather pad that I'm feeling inside here. And I'm scared that it might brush against it and tear it, but we will see. Yeah, you see, it's almost impossible to dig out like this. I, I think this case looks really interesting and really tiny and portable use, but to actually take the headphones out, you've got to be so careful. So therefore um, I am knocking off a tiger off of this because Italian leather shoes, what comes to mind. Placement for the headphones is actually shaped just like the headphones. So very, very nice canvas bag. Very, very portable. For hotels and for travel, I think this is great. This is a really good case. But uh, like I stated, the ergonomics leaves a lot to be desired. Let's put that over there. We don't need that right now. Now we come to the headphones. You're paying $3,000 for this. This is in the upper tier of flagships. This is not in the lower tier of flagships such as Arias, LCDX, etc. We have reviewed the entire lineup of the lower tier flagships reviews up here, I'm sure. Um, this headphone screams luxury, screams boutique, screams you're getting your money's worth. It's extremely light at 330 grams, magnetic extendable arms. Oh, oh, just listen to that. Oh, baby, this Alcantara underneath, leather up top. Yeah, it's real, real leather. Etched via laser is the serial number and the name, and this entire housing is machined out of one block of aluminium and 
Oh God, it's so beautiful. I absolutely love this thing. Um, the pads, fortunately, are magnetic. Thank you, Abyss. This is greatly appreciated. Akin to the Meze Audio and the P9 signatures from Bowers and Wilkins, and I think even Apple, I don't like to put that headphone amongst these flagships, obviously, but it's got to be stated, it's magnetic and it's very, very useful. Audacy, please, 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 please do the same. We can't deal with glue anymore. Now these arms extend a little bit. The ergonomics is very, very, very beautifully done, but the size is, this is a very understated, very, very small headphone. So if you've got a really large head, I think you may need to actually go and audition this before putting down $3,000. But this pad on this is the DMS pad. It's uh, modded, I believe, and it's a square design, tapered at the front and at the back. It's bigger at the back than it is at the front, and it sort of cups your ears. Now, if we extend it, say, to here and to here, so I usually use three clicks, personally, for my head shape. Let's see how it looks on the head. Absolutely feather light at 330 grams. Stunning. For my head shape, it's as if it was made for it. It's comfortable, it's light. These are a semi-open design, and the headphones themselves are very, very, very light. So comfort-wise, absolutely no problem. I've had these here since July, so they have been on my desk non-stop since then. The transducer inside this thing is 63 mil. It's freaking huge. Uh, 42 ohms and 91 dB sound pressure level. By these numbers, these are not easy to drive. And no, it's not. You can get away with certain daps but only just good enough. We'll get onto that later. But for now, hardware, build quality, stunning. There is a caveat though. The caveat is that these pads do not revolve and rotate like the Imperians and all of the other headphones. They're solid. They are part of the arms themselves. So they don't go forward and back, up and down and rotate on a 360 degree axis. Basically, the fit will come from the softness of these pads. And if that doesn't fit for you, unfortunately, you're out of luck. There is no other choice because these don't revolve or move. But like I stated, for my head shape, they're absolutely stunning. My friend Skedra sold these because he could not bear the comfort because they were pushing up here, I believe. So it's a hit and miss. But most of the time, I think you will be fine. Moving on to the pads. They are extremely supple, extremely soft. They seal very well. The opening is rather large. Pretty much any ear size should fit inside it. But if you've got big sticking out lugs, I think they will touch inside the, the felt here. They might touch inside, but you've got to have really big ears for that to happen. For me, comfort wise, they have been absolutely stellar. All day wearing, no problems, no trouble whatsoever. The 2.5 connection point inside is actually recessed. This is to avoid breaking that tiny, tiny jack, I believe, and it's um, very deeply set in there, but you've got to be careful in regards to third-party cables. I think you will have difficulties unless it's specifically made for the Dianas. Build quality, four tigers out of five. The reason I'm not giving it five is just because these don't rotate and revolve. If they did, instant five tigers. These are absolutely incredible build quality. You are getting your money's worth. This ultra strong aluminium aeroplane grade machined out of a solid block is exceptional. Exquisite, stunning, light, strong, durable. Well done, Abyss. I think you have hit the nail on the head. Let's talk about the sound. Like I stated, these headphones arrived early July. And within the first 48 hours, I said, Skedra, sorry, mate, you are not getting these back. These have become my daily drivers. These are stunning, picturesque, beautiful. They are a dark sound signature with a slight warmth in the mid-range. And uh, depending on what equipment you use, this can be slightly emphasized in regards to the warmth and actually lean towards the cooler side of things, but a dark sound signature overall. 
what impresses me the most about these, what blew my mind was the timbre, tonality and the tonal balance. It's exceptional. So much so that I actually reach for these because they're so light, they're so easy that there is not a worry of a $6,000 headphone being on your head and you having to be careful in the back of your mind constantly thinking, uh, oh God, I hope these don't drop or I hope I don't do something by yanking the cable out. Sasvara's review up here. But these are all day wearing, even getting up from your desk and just going, okay, I'm going to the kitchen, I need to grab a dap or something. That's, that's how conformative they are to your lifestyle. They are absolutely wonderful. Let's break down the frequency response. The bass region on these goes low. It does dig deep. It's a planar um, and it's very, very well textured, very well emphasized and it's balanced. What's incredible about it is that you can identify individual instruments in this region exceptionally well. So clear, transparent, high resolution, I was actually shocked. But in saying that, the sub bass is picturesque. It shows you that it has sub bass, but you don't feel the sub bass like you do with a Sesvara or an Empyrean. It's more for show. Different variations of equipment will dig deeper into this area and actually show what it can do, but you still don't get that massive BAM air impact. It's just not that kind of headphone. This is chill. This is pretty. This is picturesque. This is beautiful. This is there to show you what the bass region does in the sub area. It's very engaging. It's very, very entertaining. And you do feel it. You do feel it a bit, but it's not the violent shredding the air type of sub bass that you do get with an Empyrean, a Mad 24 or a Sesvara. It's just there. For those of you who own the HD800S, those can dig deep. If the seal is perfect, they can dig deep, but it's more coming out of the air. There is not enough masses of air being pushed into your eardrums. It just seems like the air is making sound. And that is one incredible thing about these headphones, is the fact that, that all the sound seems to be coming from elsewhere, not from the drivers. Absolutely exceptional. So we climb up to the mid bass region. This is quite punchy. Um, I've listened to Infected Mushroom on this Back to the Source album, which is absolutely stunning for if you want to uh, check out layering and bass region. Um, it's very punchy, very enjoyable, but at the same time, it's a bit chill. It's a bit not in your face, not aggressive, picturesque, showing you the most perfect way that this mid bass region is introduced to you, but without the hard, hard slam of a focal clear reviews up here. Um, it doesn't have that massive bam, bam, bam punch, you know, it's more for show, but it does punch. It does punch and it does punch hard at times as well, but it's elegant. It's beautiful rather than violent. Again, very well balanced very well integrated and an integral part of the bass region and clasping hands with a sub bass very, very well. They work really well together. But if you have this headphone and you are a bass head, this does not work out very well, not for you. But for those people who just love a actual reference, beautiful sound in the dark category, with the LCDX DNA, this is a perfected LCDX. I mean, so far ahead of it, that's not funny, but um, it's a DNA derived from the LCDX. Climbing up to the upper bass region, um, thankfully, this does not impeach on the mid range, in the lower mid range region at all. It's beautiful, it's very well textured, it's very well nuanced, um, and it does lean a little bit of help to the treble region when you get a bam, bam of trailers and things like that. But there has been occasions where it sounded a little bit thin 
um, at loud volumes above 75 dB. Uh, it definitely can come across like that for certain tracks that it does feel a little bit um, thin sounding, but not always. Like I stated, these are extremely, extremely well balanced headphones. Um, so I think it leads credence to the bass region. I think it works really, really well together. I can't stop wearing this thing. The leather is so soft, it actually su supply uh, binds around your glasses, so it seals really well. Going back to the upper bass region, it does seem to be very well enunciated, yet very well balanced. Going to the mid-range, this is where these truly shine. It's transparent. It's high resolution, it's honey, it's beautiful. It has the magic of the original Nanas. It has the magic of, I'm trying to think what headphones I actually reviewed that had this beautiful mid-range. Oh, that's it, the Mad 16s. So engaging. Vocals and instruments and the separation and the texture of the mid-range, especially in the lower mid-range and the mid-mid-range, is beautiful. The lower mid-range does not impeach in the slightest with the upper bass region. It's clear, it's clean. It really does feel like a very high resolving driver. When Abyss says this is the least of their resolving headphones, I can't wait till I get the Phi in for review and the 1266 in for review, but those will have to wait a little bit, unfortunately. Going to the mid-range, in the mid-territory, it can come forward a little bit and it can go back. It's very well textured. Guitars, accordions, acoustic guitars are very, very well defined in this region. I absolutely love it, it's honey. Climbing to the upper mid-range, Thankfully, it's neither shouty nor forward. It's very understated in a very good way. It's a perfect blend with the lower mid-range, mid-mid-range and the upper mid-range. There is none of the sibilance in the S where the lower treble and the upper mid-range meet. There is no artificial snaps and cracks of snare drums and things like that because it's very well textured. The timbre is exceptional in this region, absolutely stunning. I think one of my favourites alongside Sasvaras and Mad 24s, but thankfully there is none of that shout. That fatigues me and I can't bear it. The These ones here, the iSign 20s um, that are under review. Oh god, Shout, shouty, 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 shout, shout. You have to EQ those out, I can't stand it. No, bad bad news bears, very bad news bears. You need to go under the table and hide until we sort you out. Um, That needs EQ, review coming soon. Go into the treble region, very smooth, very well extended, very airy, and the lower treble region not shouty, not sibilant. This headphone, you can throw any genre of music at it, and I think it's the a culmination of the frequency band that allows for this. You've got excellent detail in the treble region, but none of it is overstated. Everything is chill. Can you hear the musician's fingers going up and down the fretboard? Yes. Is it laser etched into your ear canals? No. Can you hear the resonances of the body of guitars and wood instruments? Yes. With incredible timbre and incredible texture. Is it in your face? No. These are an all day headphone. And when the music calls for it and you turn the volume up a little bit like you need to with the LCDX, it hits you in the chest, it hits you in the brain, and it hits you in the gut. These are headphones with soul. Violin on this is stunning. You get the edge of the bow, the grit as the bow collides with the strings and goes up and down. You get resonance of the body. You get the absolute perfect detail. I am so impressed by these. I think these, alongside the Mad24 and Sasvaras, 
are my headphone of the year. To actually listen to this for 48 hours and go, nope, you're not having it back, it's mine. And here we have Sasvaras. That says a lot. Let's move over to the timbre and texture. I think drum skins sound exceptional on this, except when Tom Toms hit really hard and it's a very violent track. I think the bass region being kind of lean and polite sometimes does come across a little thin, but the timbre of it, the texture of it is perfect. It sounds like a real drum kit. Accordions, this vivivity that it feels like it's popping out of the air. That instrument tends to be like that on a lot of headphones. But the tonal balance and the timbre, the realism on this headphone just adds a little more touch of that pleasure. Absolute pleasure, which is wonderful. So timbre for these, I give five tigers immediately because they are exceptional. Tonal balance, I give five tigers for these. It's exceptional. Micro detail is there, but it's uh, it's one of the weaker points, I think. I think you need an even more resolving driver than these to get true micro detail. With the sound signature they have gone for, that dark sound signature. So something like an LCD4 um, might have more of a texture uh, and micro detail in the bass region than these do, but these do a very good job, don't get me wrong. These are still class leading and these are still above the lower tier flagships of clears and things like that. And um, definitely more than Imperians, 100%. Let's move over to the staging now. The staging on these is good, but it's not exceptional and it's not bad. The staging on this is intimate. It's actually quite small. It's on the same level as a Focal Clear MG. Sometimes, depending on equipment, it could be a little bit bigger. But what is incredible about it is the fact that it can shrink and expand. Not only this, but on every axis. And its precise laser etched imaging is stunning within the soundstage. The soundstage has got fantastic reverb and convincibility. You can actually see the walls of the stage. It doesn't just cascade into the distance even though it's not very big and provide a fake sounding stage like the HD800S does. Um, the HD800S is huge, don't get me wrong, stage-wise. The instruments sound huge, but there are caveats with it that actually make it sound a lot bigger than it is. I think Sasvaras have a bigger sound stage than the HD800S, but what really makes the HD800S sound a little bit fake is the fact that it decays into the distance. You don't really see the boundaries of the stage. On this you do. And it's very, very well emphasized. It's very, very well uh, pronounced. It's just not very big, but it will provide an intimate stage if it requires it, if the track requires it. It will shrink. The singer will come right up to your face with that beautiful texture and move right back when she needs to. Now I can talk about the imaging on this, which I think is absolutely freaking stunning. The thing is, it's very, very accurate imaging wise across all axes, but because the soundstage is not very, very big and every image is so precise, sometimes your brain feels a bit overloaded because it doesn't feel like you've got enough room to walk around every image as you do with the Mad 24s where it feels like you can literally, for example, this is a snare drum here, you can literally walk around it. No, everything is very, very well precisely put into space. So you've got a singer here, a drummer behind her, violin, accordion, synth behind them, and it's all there. A hundred instruments or something like that, you know? All little dot, 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 dot. Look up at the stars in the sky and you can see all the stars. It's all clear, but there is a thousand, a million of them and you just think, oh, there's so many up there. You can't really individually grab one. Yet the resolution is high enough for you to hear it perfectly. I think it could do with a little bit of a bigger stage and I think this is where the Phi and the 1266 come in. We will do a comparison, hopefully, at some point soon. So imaging, absolutely exceptional, but tend to overwhelm each other. 
not in a bad way, just the fact that there's so many of it. There is so many of it and it's in a quite small amount of space. We can move on to vocals now. Vocals have beautiful body, beautiful texture, real sounding for men and for women. I think women sound a little bit better on this because of that honey tone. It's exceptionally engaging. It's beautiful and soulful. You can hear the crack of the lips. You can hear the pronunciation of every word. If you're listening to a foreign track, you don't miss the words. It doesn't become a blur. And texture from the back of the throat and from the chest is well emphasized on male vocals. The upper bass region does lead credence to this. It's very real sounding, but it does sound a little small. It's a little bit small and it's there. Comes forward, goes back, but it doesn't sound immense like a Mad 24 does, but it's got perfect timbre. It's beautiful. Listening to Meatloaf's I Will Do Anything For Love, it actually kind of brings tears to your eyes. It's insane. It's uh, so engaging. Mwah! Love these headphones. They, they, they are literally that good. You feel a connection with it, a bond with the singer. When you're sitting there with a glass of wine or a glass of whiskey and you've got these on your head, even though you've used it all day for work, you just sort of fade into this arena and into this space. And that brings us to, let me paint you a picture. You've been asked to close your eyes. Your girl is holding your hand and actually pulling you into the garden. It's 9 p.m. at night. The sky is beautiful navy, just dark and vivid, no haze, transparent, looking straight into the heavens. Every star is out with their individual white radiance shining. You climb up this marble staircase and park your bottom on this beautiful couch that's been set out for you. You're slightly elevated and you can see ahead of you, once you've opened your eyes, you're in a semi-sphere staging. 180 degrees fisheye, for example. A small stage has been set out in front of you with a band, six pieces to eight pieces of equipment on there. You look to your left, you look to your right, and you can even look behind you. But the scene that's been set for you is intimate. So you sit in there, smiling. You can see on every single branch, white bulbs with a soft white light has been hung so that it illuminates everything beautifully. And this is the characteristic of these headphones. It's a dark sound signature, but everything has got its own luminescence, as if a white soft light is shining from behind the instrument so that it comes into the forefront and then the singer starts singing and you can go, yes, there she is. She catches your eye and you give her a smile. That's how close she is. And then you see the violinist and the drummer. When the drummer hits the tom-toms, it comes across like this in a perfect axis so that you can close your eyes and take a pencil and paint where every drum is in the kit, where every cymbal is around the tom-toms, where the hi-hat is, where the snare drum is. The texture of every instrument is apparent because in this outdoor evening performance. There is no bird chirping. There is no noise of cars. It's soft. Everybody's gently talking to each other and the band is playing and you don't miss anything. There is no discourse. There's no shouting. There is no apparent nastiness in the frequency response. No peaks, no valleys, not to my ears. Just beautiful, artistic perfection. I am enamored by the Dianas. I think I might love the dark sound signature. I think it might be my preference. I can reach for Sasvaras. I've got a very powerful system behind me. Um, it sounds absolutely mind blowing. I don't know why I keep reaching for these. I think for all of us, there needs to be that headphone that has some kind of soul that sings to us. Diana sits with Sasvaras in my opinion. I don't know. The engineer at Abyss has done magic. 
they have done magic here. I, I absolutely love this headphone. Back to the performance. The resonances from the instruments in this little arena can go behind you very, very well. And the elevation is pretty good as well. The transducers inside this are 63 mil, I believe, and they're very, very big. So they do reproduce sound very, very well. Just like that evening where everything's perfect, in this arena that you've been taken to in your garden, that's how tracks are produced on this. I have gone from jazz, to rock, to metal, to EDM, to classical, absolutely no problem. If you give it a good source and a powerful chain and a beautiful chain, it will shine no matter what genre you throw at this. Mind-blowingly exceptional. Absolutely stunning. I've been running this on the A90 back here with the gold point stepped attenuator to bypass the bad pot in that amplifier and it just becomes incredible. I've been using the Holo Audio Spring 2L4. The Spring 3 is actually coming in for a review. This one is going to Golden Sounds. He's going to be doing the Spring 2, Spring 3 comparison and review soon. I recommend checking his channel out. He's exceptional. Um, and then I've been using this baby here that just recently came in. The Poor 6000. Oh my word, you wanna subscribe for this review. Priced at 1,200 pounds. It's in the flagship territory, not the insane flagship territory. The gold touch is still two and a half thousand and there's one for three and a half thousand. So this sits like the Diana does in the Abyss lineup. And using this on low gain, you get a perfect chill volume at around 60 dB or so, but with perfect, stunning delivery across the frequency band, smooth, and very, very well provided with power across all the frequency responses so that nothing becomes over edgy. Because when you overpower headphones sometimes or the delivery is not correct, you get treble issues where it comes forward, bass drops, mid-range goes wonky. No, 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 no. This, $3,000. This, £1,200. Uh, $5,000 or so. You have one of the most incredible portable setups you can take to a hotel with you, you can find. And if you can afford a gold touch, hell yes. This headphone is versatile. It can go anywhere with you. So I've been running it on these chains. I even put it on the ES100. I think I've got one back there somewhere. No, that's a no, no. Then I ran it on the uh, SMSL stack, the mini stack review up here. Um, that was okay, uh, passable. So if you do decide to buy this and then decide to buy the DAC and amp later, those will power this fine. It just won't be the beautiful tonality I'm discussing here at all. It'd just be a little bit more dark, a little bit more neutral, a little bit more clinical and lifeless. Okay, what are the caveats of this headphone? I would say the packaging is understated. Personally, I don't care for boxes and things like that. I mean, it's nice, but I don't care. Um, it would be nice to have an actual, like a proper presentation like you do with Focal. The bag is nice. This is a really nice bag. I think the design, if the zips were more on the outer edges, so this flap was wider and it opened up so that you don't damage the headphones on uh, opening it up, I think that would have been better. But it's a very nice canvas bag. It feels a bit like denim. It's absolutely beautiful. I really like it. Um, the execution is a little bit wonky, in my opinion. But most importantly of all, Abyss, I am talking to you now personally, the engineers at Abyss. You guys have revisioned the Diana twice. There has been another revision. This is the V2 variant, where the pad is a, twice as thick as this, but I think it will take away a little bit from the elegance. And um, the pads are even softer. I will bring those pads in for review and do a re-review of this six months down the line. And uh, Abyss themselves will change the headband for you, um, I think, if you send it back. Uh, obviously paying for it, it's not gonna be free. So if you do have a V2, I think uh, DMS was saying there is a possibility of being able to add the new headband to it if that's your preference. For me, the comfort has been exceptional on this, so I've got no worries. Um, I'll just get the new pads to see what it does sonically. In the next variant after the one you just released with the thicker pads up top and on the sides. If you can, please, where this headband is inside, if you can make it tilt forward and back and up and down a little bit so that more people can experience these beautiful headphones without comfort issues. That's all I would say to you. Even the 2.5 recess jacks, I don't mind, I don't care, because this is exceptional. But please, people are restricted due to the fit of this like this, being so solid 
and so rigid and I know you've gone for the boutique look because having that move around makes a like a rattly noise sometimes and it's just not really exceptional but Imperian have done it, Bowers and Wilkins have done it, other companies have done it. So please, for the sake of uh, the other audiophiles out there that love this headphone and just can't wear it. Because my friend Skedra said this was good enough for him. He wouldn't have not even bought Sesvaras. Because remember, Sesvaras you buy $6,000, but you have to have a 11K chain behind you. And this, you don't. You can get away with a poor 6,000 at 1,200. Um, so please address this issue if you can. We really would appreciate it. I would like to extend a massive thank you to Skedra again for sending this in for review. And I'm sorry you're not getting it back. It's mine. I would like to thank the Patreon members in the audio lounge chat. Thank you so much for keeping the chat alive over there. And thank you for joining the public chat and the private chats. It's very, very much appreciated. The channel is growing steadily and I thank you guys for that as well. It's most gratifying. Tell me if you've got Diana's in the comment section and how you're powering it and how it's been for you so we can start a discussion there. I'm really looking forward to hearing your opinions on this headphone because I think it's absolutely stunning. I have been mesmerized by these headphones. That brings us to giving the scores. Diana V2, I would have given you five tigers immediately, but due to the fact that a lot of people have given up the Dianas because of this stable, solid cup mechanism, I have to take one tiger away for that because there have been people in my own chat that have talked to me about this and um, they have specifically said that's the reason why we can't uh, keep it around because it's not comfortable, uh, because it's too rigid. So that is a flaw for a lot of people, unfortunately. For me, perfection, but for them, no. So four solid tigers. I can't wait to bring the Fi in for review and the 1266, so subscribe for that. It really does help the channel out and dig us out under the algorithm. And press the like button if you like this review and you want more reviews like it. I am Koji CEO. I will see you next time. Peace.